I'm in Max, Max, Max. You are listening to Happy Jack's RPG Podcast. I'm in Max, 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 Max. Pursuing the RPG hobby with reckless abandon. Hi. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Season 19, episode 3. Three. Happy Jack's RPG Podcast. My name is Stu. Why do you look so guilty? Why do I look you, guilty? You were like, hi. Like, like, you got, like <laughs> somebody caught you with your hand in the cookie jar. I dark. was passing gas at the time. Oh. Yeah. He's okay. waiting to I see would. if I changed it. And now we're all him. stuck here. Yeah. Uh, Stork, hi. Good to see you guys. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Dave. <sighs> and I'm Kimmy. Hi. That's over and done with. In this episode of Happy Chicks RPG Podcast, Steve from SoCal writes in again about killing mooks. Jonas writes in about Don't kill handling... Mookie's a nice guy. Huh? Don't you... kill Mookie's a mooks, nice guy. Not capitalized. No, mooks. Oh, not mook. multiple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I understand. When his clone army comes. Exactly. We have to fight. We're going to have to. If anyone has one, it'll be the mooks. Right. <laughs> Jonas writes in about handling dying campaigns. The only other Steve in SoCal, that's a different Steve in SoCal. Oh. <clears throat> writes in about the dangerously futile exercise of defining RPGs. And Golupshua's Geek writes in with some fan mail and a horror story. Yay! Oh, right. You can email us at happychecksrpg at gmail.com, happychecksrpg at gmail.com. For the run of fair, we're only going to be reading probably about four emails an episode, though. So we have an enormous backlog. There's enough... Ep- backlog! There's enough uh, emails in the backlog right now to do all seven... Uh, shows during mm-hmm. the course of fair and then some. So be warned. Um, what else is happening during fair? On Sundays, we have our D&D oh, 5e Sundays campaign. D- D&D. Which is Desert of Despair. And then on Mondays, alternating, we have the Rifts game. Mm-hmm. Central mm-hmm. Flips, Rifts. And the Masks, Masks game. Yes. An occasional mini painting. That was an experiment. I don't know when that's going to actually start. Mm-hmm. It's probably going to alternate with uh, the hot seat. Yeah, I think we're going to hold off on hot seat till the end of fair, just because a lot of the hosts who still have to come on are doing fair right now. Right. But I think we're going to maybe do the mini painting like every other Wednesday or something. Because people it, liked having us just talk about nothing. Like, they really enjoyed that. If you move it from Thursdays to Wednesdays, you can get some boggards who are also Happy Jacks people. Right. Well. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, Happy Jacks RPG. All one word. And also Instagram. Same thing. If you'd like to watch the show live, watch it happyjacks.org slash live. Or you can watch happyjacks.org slash twitch or slash YouTube, if that's your preference. Uh, we also, i, I got to talk to you about um, games we're running after. Because there, well, I guess someone else emailed me in a game. I'm like, oh, I want to play in that. Wait, they want you to play in their game? Yeah. And you want to play in that? They, they were. They want to run it. Oh. And I'll, oh yeah, I want to play in that. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, uh, Vampire Dark Ages. Ooh. Yes. Yeah, we have lots of interesting things. Yes. Okay. By the way, if Vampire wasn't complicated enough to figure out, now they're going to be releasing a fifth edition because because White Wolf owns part of it and Onyx Green Path. Ronin owns part. Onyx Path, Onyx Path owns Path. another part. And it's going to. I'm well. I'm, this is going to be like trying to track down. I think Onyx Path doesn't Onyx. I don't know. Does Onyx Path own both? I thought I just read an article today, and it, and even though I read the article, I'm still confused. <clears throat> is it for is this for newer world or old world? New, because uh, they just came out. They just came out with the a oh. new, new new world of darkness. I'll go world. reread the article, and then I can have a yeah. legitimate rant, mm-hmm. which I got, which is fantastic. Mm. Onyx Path only licenses, according to the chat. They don't actually own it, they just license. Mm-hmm. It's just White Wolf is just like, oh, we don't have time to do anything anymore because they're too busy being. <laughs> no, but somebody's topic. releasing a fifth edition. A fifth edition? Uh-huh. Are you sure you're not talking about L5R? Pretty sure. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I haven't. I, I, they've had a lot of editions. I, That's I, what I, would I mean. Think it's like more, it wasn't there's confusing been enough. more than that. They do, they're still coming out with, the, with 20th I, anniversary edition. It sounds, if it's old. It sounds old. to me like it's going to be. There's going to be two sets of things. There are coming two. Out. There are two. Yeah. Well, there's, all right. the, there's the World of Darkness right. books, and then there's the Old World of Darkness right. books. So, chat room, Sploid says, "New White Wolf, Night, New White Wolf doesn't care for New World of Darkness. Fifth edition Vampire the Masquerade starts playtesting soon. 
So. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a, like a, a... Eliminate the new world. New world. So they're not. They're gonna. They're gonna kill the new world. Apparently, this is the thing. It's so they confusing. just came out with. It. I know, but I think I that's mean, Onyx Path. Uh huh. So oh, Onyx Path. Oh my God! So there's gonna be a third. That's yes. what. That's what I'm trying to say. A I mean, third, it's like okay. it wasn't confusing enough to figure out what it is you wanted to play. Well, I was gonna play. But it's not Changeling the Lost. It's gonna be first the, edition of yeah. new, new New World. Oh Jesus! <laughs> so there's old world, new world, and new New World. <sighs> As if it's not complicated enough. It was. That's great. That's what I was just That's trying great. to say. It's like, like, <laughs> it's like Traveler. Or like I was oh going to run Stormbringer well, and I got so lost in which edition two. was which. Oy, or okay. RuneQuest. There was Traveler 20. There's a D20 version yep. of Traveler. Well, sure. There's a GURPS version of Traveler that's licensed as well. Then right. there was, then there was Mega Traveler. But I don't think licensed anymore. But that was also GDW then. All right. That's why New World of Darkness is now called Chronicles of Darkness. Yes. Cro yeah, Chronicles mm -hmm. of Darkness. So there's going to be Old World Chronicles and New. And then there's a video game in the works as well. There was a video game before, well, wasn't there? I think it's the video game from before was an awesome video game. Was it? Mm -hmm. it was, Bloodlines? Yeah, Bloodlines was a really good game. Yeah. It was really fun. And they did, especially for the time, they did a really good job of letting you play any of the clans. So, mm -hmm. like, you... Only make, Camarilla or literally all? <laughs> only the Camarilla. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, uh, like, you could make your vampire and play, and they had different... Branching story points where, like, if you had the right power set, you could get characters to interact with you different ways. Right. So if you made a Toreador, you had, like, the awe power, and you could do stuff with, you know, convince yes. people to talk to you. And right. Versus, you know... All now, I, I wonder if the really new new world is going to use the same model where there's a core book and all the separate books, because oh. White Wolf started that way with it, mm -hmm. or if they're going to... Go the V twenty W twenty way and just have. I'm just pissed that now I gotta. It's, you gotta need a serious map, and even even publishing dates aren't gonna help you because if Onyx Path is publishing stuff almost concurrently with New New World, how do you figure well, out on, which one is the one? Onyx you want? Path took over Old World. I, I know. Somewhere on there there will be a little C saying. in a circle, and it'll <laughs> right. say Onyx Path, okay. or it'll say White Wolf. <laughs> Actually, it's on, printed on the back. On yeah. the back of the book, it'll has the little Onyx Path little. Well, and they're all digital. Mm-hmm. Right. There's I, no, you can't just I go to a books. game store. Well, sure, you can do, and they're print on demand or whatever. Not. That's fine, but they're not. They're the big, especially the big ones are not cheap. No, no, no but you're that's not going to walk into a game store and have, have both products on a shelf next to each other to, to confuse you. Right. You have to look, and then you'll see the publisher. Yeah. It's still confusing. No matter what. Oh, yeah. the MMO was canned. Oh. Fifth edition Vampire: The Masquerade will likely be a standalone book. You can't yeah, read my shirt. Sure. My shirt says, "In in what does it say?" In, in memory, memory of, of when, when I cared. cared. Oh shit! And he dropped. He it. cared so little he didn't even he remember what was on his own shirt. Yeah, I'm actually all out of fucks. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I have none to give. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, first email. This is uh, killing mooks versus monsters. The morality of murder from Steve and SoCal. Assholes. Oh, wait. We have to. What? I'm sorry. Go ahead. A holiday today. It's National Beer Day. Is it really? Yeah, I think so. Facebook told yeah, me so. Yeah, that's a thing. They wouldn't lie. So if you go to a bar, they give you free beer? No, we no. just get to celebrate beer. I believe Rob Taylor actually posted in the Slack yeah. as well. So you get, we uh, get to celebrate beer today. Happy National Beer Day. Yeah. Do you get free Santa Claus on Christmas? No. You Kids do. Buy that shit for them. Kids do. Kids get free everything. What? Spoilers. <laughs> but oh, anyway. fuck that. It's National Coffee Cake Day. Beer, I love how there's all, there's like forty different yeah, holidays every for every I day. I love coffee cake. I, well, coffee yeah. cake's good. National No Housework Day, and it's also National Education and Sharing Day. Really? Oh. Look at that! On National Beer Day, we're sharing our knowledge right. and education. I love how Beer Day, Coffee Cake Day, and No Housework Day all come together in one day. That's <laughs> right. so perfect. You because you're, sit you're, around you're the drunk house. with a diabetic coma. <laughs> you can't do any <laughs> Brown sugar smear. You beat me to it. I, I set it up and I was going to beat you beat me to it. <laughs> Tomorrow is National Burrito Day, National Caramel Popcorn Day. That's oddly specific. National <laughs> Student Athlete Day, National Tartan Day. National oh, where my kilt tomorrow? Athlete Day is on a Saturday. That's Well, well it's on a it's day. It's on April 6th. Yeah, yeah, no, so it moves. National uh, uh, National Teflon Day. Oh. National I'll avoid prosecution tomorrow. <laughs> National Sorry Charlie Day. 
Is that from the Tuna? Chicken of the Sea? Yeah. I'm wondering. What? There's no chicken in it either, apparently. No, there isn't. No. It's, it's I think Britney, is it Britney Spears that figured that one out? or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paris Hilton? Somebody was like, one of no, those. Is, is there chicken in this? Uh, National Alcohol Screening Day. Well, oh, that's well, good. Because you got a little time to recover from well, that. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Need oh no, that. I'm sorry. All that stuff was Thursday. I'm oh. sorry. Mm. I was gonna say that's super appropriate for the first day of the Renaissance <clears throat> Fair, National Beer Screening Day. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Jessica okay. Simpson. Unfortunate. Jessica oh, Simpson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> chicken of the sea. Is there chicken in this? Poor guy. Uh, sorry, sorry. Assholes. Sorry. Stu claimed that I'd write in, call, in calling you assholes for misinterpreting my email in season 18, episode 16. And you did, right at the very top. Yeah. While a good discussion... Mission accomplished. <laughs> while a good discussion resulted, it wasn't exactly what I was getting at. This was one of those, you know, you didn't actually read um, my email. Actually. <clears throat> uh, your discussion revolved around tools to discourage violence in modern settings, which is all useful and good and stuff. However... My current struggle is how to leave the door open for violent confrontation in games where the PCs will primarily be up against other humans or sentient humanoids. For better or worse, in fantasy games, a lot of the adversaries tend to be either outright monsters, no one is going to hesitate slaughtering that purple worm marauding the countryside, even though humanoids, humanoid adversaries, orcs, goblins, kobolds, drow, are often portrayed as inherently evil, and thus quote-unquote uh, okay to kill... Evil. I tend to humanize most of my NPC humanoids, as do I. Uh, but even so, no one sheds a tear over a cannibalistic knoll or etten. The struggle I'm fighting with is how to leave open the door for your shoddy, shooty, fighty, former Marine, hardcore Bushi to still use his combat skills now and again. I, and most of my players... <clears throat> are going are often going to lean towards the UN peacekeeper side of that equation where you don't shoot until you've you've been shot at but an L5R or traveler that probably just means that they didn't shoot back until they've already been killed yeah yeah going back to my original example of something akin to the ashes of exodus encounter with the refueling ship I'll modify the example to avoid spoilers and to better fit my point my fictitious crew of PCs in their most non-combat spaceship is being approached by another ship, which is very likely a pirate vessel. Unfortunately, there is no skull and crossbones flag, and the enemy hasn't done anything outright illegal. But if the PCs just let them keep coming closer, then if they turn out to be pirates, the PCs in their wimpy civilian ship are hosed. Ideas that come to mind that could follow uh, uh, could allow the fighty slash shooty PCs to still be valuable and or use their skills might be, one, playing the quote-unquote bad guys more realistically scared, i.e. just shooting in the general direction of someone is likely to scare away a vast majority of even criminal folks and might not be serious enough to immediately warrant jail time. Mm, depends where that's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, two, encourage folks, encouraging folks to play more like Bill's Traveler Yakuza guy or Stu's ex-spook who use their martial prowess indirectly as a tool of intimidation, polishing or brandishing weapons menacingly, for example. Three, allowing for a turn or two of friend or foe recognition as the bad guys start shooting at friendly NPCs or spook when the cops come around, thus alerting the PCs that they're valid targets. I know it's odd to be encouraging murder hoboing, but I'm trying to leave open the door so that all character types can have roles to play. Thanks, Steve from SoCal. P.S. In the spirit of all the old emails that put advice for accents after the email, I'm actually <laughs> from Chicago, but transplanted to the South Bay about 17 years ago, so feel free to read the last bit in your best Chicago accent. I, I don't have one of those. I don't think, I don't have a Chicago accent. I don't know what a Chicago accent Hey, is. coppers! Like, isn't that better? No, I can't do it. No. I'm sorry. I forgot to shame on myself. I could, uh, mm. All I can get is sort of, you know, the the Philly kind of thing. That's not Chicago. No. No, I... No. Um, it's Chicago, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's closer. <laughs> it's closer than we are now. It's at least by the Great Lakes. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, so he... It sounds like he's got people who 
or he's got talky people, maybe, who uh, are finding ways to get uh, out of potential combat situations. But he wants to make sure he has the. How dare they? How he wants to have. Yeah, I know. But he wants to. He, he wants to let the shooty and the fighty people have an opportunity to use their shooty and fightiness. And I also get out of this that he doesn't telegraph them as being bad guys. It's like they don't show up with skulls and crossbones. They don't have ninja tattooed across right, their forehead. Right. They they just look like people. But until they start shooting at you, you don't know if they're good or bad yet. I mean, one example where rolling in secret is a kind of a good idea. Mm. You can, if you want to have a, a situation where they, they are bad guys, but the party may not necessarily know it, like a ship approaching or something like that, fudge the roll for the first uh, their first surprise attack, and it misses. Mm-hmm. Or maybe when they draw weapons, that's when initiative starts, or that's the, everybody gets a chance now to, to act, as opposed right. to they draw weapons and shoot at you. Right. So that now you have a like, oh my god, they're drawing on us, which is what I think you did to us. No. No, you just shot at us? No, I, they, they came on the airlock to, to uh, they opened. And the, and, the door, and that's right, the door opened. They opened up and they threw a flashbang right, in and right, they started right. shooting. That's right. <laughs> yes, they weren't, they were fucking. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of like examples like, um, like in Dare, like have you seen any of the Netflix shows? Some no, of them. Any of yeah. them? All of them. Like in, in Daredevil, you can tell that they're bad people by where they are. It's sort of situational. It's like, if they're in a drug den making drugs, you pretty much know that they're all guilty there. So Unless they're like the sad slave people. Right, but the sad slave people were also pretty obvious. You know, they were, yeah. well, I don't want to give really spoilers. Really have but... everybody wear like dress code. Like, <laughs> you are the bad guy. Right, like, like the warriors. Yes. Right? Like all the other gangs are in fucked up outfits. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so they're like, you the, see a they're guy like in a baseball uniform of bad guys. Skates. Now, and I know you don't want to telegraph it, but that's why I'm saying it's maybe sometimes situational. It's like if you're breaking into the lab, everybody in there is you know, guilty except maybe the people being experimented on. I, I don't know. I'm... Dahlia! Shut up! <laughs> uh, now, now, let me go back to this because cause you're getting well, another angry meal. Yeah. Um, the struggle I'm fighting with is how to leave open the door for your shooty, fighty, former Marine or hardcore Bushy character to still use combat skills now and again. I, and most of my players, are often going to lean towards the UN peacekeeper side of the equation, where you don't shoot until you've been shot at. But an L5R traveler... Okay. So, he, he want, he's, well, he's looking... Specifically L5R, that's the handiness of having the code of Bushido. Right. Yeah. Like, having those, especially, like, for us, when they were up on the wall, and we could be like... All right, I think I can attack this guy. Right. Well, no, they're 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 lean, they're, these people lean towards not shooting. Right. So they, but, he what he wants to do is give them more situations where they can shoot. Well, sure, but this he is wants a to give them backwards problem. Yes, it is. No, I think what he wants to do is give them situations where they don't feel like they have to be timid about it. Hmm. Maybe. Well, I mean, in L5R, that's easy. Just get, have someone just insult your honor and insult your daimyo over and over and right. over again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But t- that 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 will take care of itself. That's an easy one though. Uh, the example of the traveler, if you're out in the middle of space and another ship's approaching and you send them a message saying, "Hey, we don't like that. You should go mm-hmm. or leave us alone. If you don't, you'll be considered hostile." That's mm-hmm. enough. Like if players give someone a warning or an ultimatum, then that's enough. Like yeah. if they continue to but, but then, maintain that behavior. But but I think I think part of the problem is then that Take our vampire game for example. Yeah. A numerous amount of people want to talk their way out of it, or charm their way out of it, or use sure. or use their those skills to to as a. And then the meanwhile, the other people are like I, I I have no nothing to contribute. I want to kill something. I, that's all I can do. So I mean, I can sort of see the problem is like after three or four sessions of them talking their way past guards and into things, the the shooty fighty guys like, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe maybe I, I get it. You need to give him something to shoot at. Maybe drones. Maybe the odd robot now and again that just can't be reasoned with. Uh, but but I think the, the problem tank. is that you've got a, you've got a, yeah. you've got right. a tank in a bunch of uh, you know politicians. Well, I think part of it too is like the way you set up the world. Yeah. If you're setting up a world that doesn't have consequences, like I mean, none of us really well, worry about killing humans too much in the in the vampire game. Right. So it's like there's no consequences for us with that. Killing other vampires that can have huge consequences. So it's all about like what consequences you set up for them killing people. If there's, like, random bad guy who jumps them on the highway, like, no one's going to probably 
bat an eye at that and things like that. So I think it's, you've probably created a world where there are things they're afraid of, consequences they're afraid of. And that's like having a, as it should, like an effect on their behavior and their, their maybe Maybe you to go kill. to, a, maybe there's a world where the law level is very low and it's more like a free zone where yeah. people can do whatever they want. Or they do Lots something. Lots of things are decriminalized. Yeah. Or they get a they do something for somebody and they get a get out of jail free card. I mean, right. that they can look cash at, in later. Look at I hate to bring this up, but look at Firefly. Right, mm -hmm. Jane was pretty much the shooty guy, and it was always he was always kind of stuck in this moral quandary, like you know, why did you shoot him? We needed information out of him. Sorry, uh, it's, all, it's all I can <laughs> do. You know, it, it, it would have been nice to have some grenades right about now, right, don't you think? Right. <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe what you, I guess, need to do then is have occasional situations where the shooty guy is the only guy that knows how to solve the problem. Like, all right, enough talk. Now it's my turn, yeah. right? Or they're not being reasonable. Why don't you go, why don't you go reason with them, Jane? Okay. <laughs> right. Um, I, I, see, I see his quandary. I, I, I think I'm getting it now, which is you have a, you have a diverse group, and, and it's hard to please everybody. He's trying to throw a couple of bones towards the people that aren't being... Um, Valued? No, are being used? Or no, I don't, I don't read that in the email. Well, because he says, like, uh, ideas that come to mind to allow the fighty shooty guy to still feel valuable and or use his skills. Right, he's not getting enough to do. Right. Well, uh, like, well, encouraging folks to play more like... Because way out, people right. are, are, are winning more often. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, like, you know, I, I agree the whole, the whole um, using your, your, oh, your martial say, powers to indirectly as a tool of intimidation is a good one. But that only, yeah. you know, you can, you can, you know, polish your weapon and, and brandish it. But after a while, that's sort of unsatisfying. It's like... Yeah. I want to shoot something. It's while I put all these points in my shooting skilling. Make some guys that are not as prone to falling for social tricks. Yeah. Right. Or just have them start shooting first. Like, oh, yeah. we don't want to talk. Boom. Like, mm -hmm. like have that uh, situations I mean, like that. Go I down. also like the idea of having some other NPCs that get whacked. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that can really set a tone for a group where they're going yeah. in thinking they're the hot shit, and then they see some guy that they vaguely know that just gets his head blown off, and they're like, oh, oh okay, we're in this. You know? And you can also we're just make them really despicable. It's like, you know, when you have kidnapped children or something, and then, yeah. you, then you know there's really no reasoning with them, or why would you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, if they do something so despicable that nobody wants to talk to them. Right. Right. Yeah. All it takes, stray dog, kick it. <laughs> <laughs> One stray dog walks in front of the bad guy, Maybe he already has a gun out. Maybe you're kind of talking with him, and he just kicks the shit out of that dog. And he's dead. And, but it, <laughs> like, there's no coming back from that. And, and uh, bringing up the daredevil thing again. I mean, um, in a certain way, the kingpin was a very talky guy. He liked to talk first, and he thought of himself as a as a great communicator. And really, in a way, he was a thug. But but he he valued he valued talking first. He would always approach him sort of, and when that right. broke, he would break people's necks. Right. Um, it's Don't, a yeah. She's Dahlia. Get down. <laughs> right in the mush. <laughs> Yuck. Go down. Right. My dog doesn't lick. That's gross. <laughs> well, it's a dog. It, it, she only licks her butt once in a while, though. So I'm okay. sure it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's very clean. Yeah. Dogs have very clean mouths. <laughs> they very rarely Just eat keep telling yourself food. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, once a week, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just roll the dice. See how right. lucky you are. Depends yeah. on what garbage they ate the day before. Exactly. They're all wonderful. That too. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Thank you, Steve from SoCal. Yes. Yeah. There's no really uh -huh. real easy answers to this question. I mean, it's. I think he sounds like he's. It doing is a everything very right. unusual question. It yeah. is. It's, I mean, it's also it's just usually the other way around. Again, it's 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 also game world uh, uh, situational as well. You know. Also, a providing thing. a group with rules of engagement isn't mm -hmm. a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like if they're in some sort of an organization or whatever, and they're told. Hey, look! This is a free fire zone, or the specific group you're after. You can do what you need to do. Uh, even Wild West style, having a wanted dead or alive poster. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. But even Tombstone, you had to turn your weapons in, right? But but then people didn't, and that's when you knew they were well, bad guys. Well, sure, <laughs> sure. But, or the I mean, law. Or the law. <laughs> but like, if a group of adventurers wandered into Tombstone and there was a poster on the side of the post office that said "Wanted Dead or Alive," whatever bad guy. Biff Brannigan. You know, <laughs> and the and the reward amount was the same for both. Mm -hmm. Right. Then players go, oh, "All right, mm -hmm. well, it's a lot easier to just shoot somebody and bring them back dead than it exactly. is to." Mm -hmm. A lot less risk. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. How to handle a dead campaign from Jonas Larson. 
sorry this time. Salutations to the heroes and martyrs that fell at douche battle of Happy Jack Hill. May you forever belch in our hearts. <coughs> it's time. I don't come for an answer. I come for help. I recently lost a campaign to the clutches of adult life, and I don't know the best way to handle it. Crying your beer. Yeah. That's all you can. That's all we do. <laughs> <laughs> this usually never happens to me. I consider the end, the grand finale of a campaign, to be the most important part of the whole experience. I therefore go to the utmost, or to the uttermost length, to ensure that all campaigns I take under my wings run their course. But my latest campaign just died. I tried to keep it alive during almost a year, but after only managing to get two sessions out of because, out because of rescheduling and last minute rain checks, I realized it was time to take it behind the shed and tell the nope. kids it had moved to a nice nope. farm where it could play with other campaigns. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of bad luck involved just when we started to play. There were actually no problems with the group itself, but some players had things like divorces happening out in their real life. People said that they wanted to play, but the damage was already done. The campaign never pulled itself out of its shark, uh, shaky beginning. I know tabletop RPGs aren't really that important in the grand scheme of things. Sure, it's a huge part of my identity and enriches my life in several significant ways, but it's still only a hobby. But I can't help but feeling sad by the, uh, feeling sad by the whole, whole, whole ordeal. I had put down a lot of work hours in prepping the campaign, and I looked forward to how me and my players would experience this unique collaborative story together. Um, for Fear the Boot fans, I can add that I actually stole the idea for the campaign from Fear the Boot. One of the hosts, I don't remember which one right now, always laments over how he wanted to run a fantasy campaign where everyone played dwarves, and how that, uh, that campaign also went to the trash bin after a couple of sessions. I created an isolationist and Orwellian underground society for my players where you go, instead of getting a plus one axe, get an inspirational book from Great Leader with quotes like, the difference between a friend and an enemy is that you have to work twice as hard to spy on an enemy. <laughs> the players weren't only going to fi fight through monsters and traps, but also try to survive, a, uh, survive blind bureaucracy and entropic mountains of red tape. But alas... This was never to come to pass. So how to handle an aborted campaign? Just move on with your life and forget about it? Try and return to it after a couple of years? Play the character's descendants and go to <laughs> Death Island. Look forward to your counsel. If you need me, I will be in my bed, staring blankly at the ceiling while listening to pretentiously sad music. Uh, backslash the two and... Online onlys. Only. Onlys. Sorry, Jonas and Jonas. Uh, you you made North Korea the role playing game. <laughs> I think I know why it died. Uh, <laughs> see, now that inspires me to try and come up with a game for like Brazil. Yeah. It, it, right? Yeah. Like it would be. Sorry. Which is like North Korea the role playing <laughs> game. <laughs> right, but it could, it could be fun because there's already there's already the like. You know, uh, what's it? Paranoia? Yeah. Kind of a deal, you know. Right. It'd be easy to mod in some stuff. Sure. I First of all, I think you made a big mistake in telling everybody what your plot was, because I would have just held on to this, put this in a folder and filed it away somewhere for the time when you suddenly are like, hey, I got five people here, you guys get... And then bust this campaign Look, out. We're super pretentious. We're like, all his players listen to our show. Yeah, that's Absolutely, true. no that's question. True. That's true. <laughs> well, no, even... But it's not like he gave away, like, oh, this is the bad guy, but he's secretly been leaving. No, yeah, that's know, true. He didn't give you that kind of detail. Uh, you know, sometimes the failed campaign put away for a while becomes awesome. Yeah. Uh, we've talked before about, I read, um, I, I watched an interview with the guys that wrote the Expanse books. Mm -hmm. And it started off where the one dude had done all the world building and prep as a job for a MMO RPG video game. Mm -hmm. And then the company that paid him to do all that prep work went out of business. Mm. So he just had these giant binders full of all of the, the world building that he'd done. Mm. And he just put them on the shelf. He's like, I don't know what to do with this. So mm -hmm. Then later on he met the other guy that was an author and they both played RPGs and he's like, I've got a great space setting. I've got a world. Pulled Ready it out, ran a game in it in some RPG that they've never said what they played and I'd like to know. Yeah, um, yeah totally. Well, it could be, but it, there's other choices it might yes. have been. Um, 
But, uh, you know, and then, lo and behold, the other guy goes, hey, we should get together and write a story. This is awesome. And now, you know, three seasons of a TV show and... A series of books and two. millions of dollars later. Well, the third one's greenlit. I mean, yeah. it's going. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm relieved because I'd heard that it was not getting very good ratings. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know past three, but... Right. So I, I, my advice is to not give up on it. Just shelve it and keep it away. To because at some point it, it, you can use it again. You could also repurpose it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no reason that this fantasy campaign can't get transplanted to a traveler campaign or get yeah. turned into a there's superhero al- campaign. There's also the possibility that the game died because you did not have a lot of interest in it. Yeah, I would. I would. I mean, like have an honest conversation with the players. Like, hey. Was it really life, or were you just not all interested in playing dwarves, or... Or I mean, is it the North Korea aspect, yeah. or... Yeah, but I don't think that was... I don't think he said, hey, I'm going to play... You guys are going to play this game with mountains of bureaucracy. It's going to be like North Korea. Is that cool? I don't think he said that. I think he said that it's going to be this... Right, but it turned in... But that's what it was. But it never started it. I thought no, he, did he did start it. Yeah, he played it for a while, yeah, a and then it episodes, went, yeah. so it was like twice yeah. in one... The last twice in year. a year, yeah. Yeah. And I can see, if you're running a game and it's like, okay, the first three sessions are going to be about bureaucracy to be able to check out weapons to go on an adventure. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to interest me. So that it, it, it could be that conceit of the, you know, the battling bureaucracy is going to be one of your main tropes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And some people are interested. That's in that. like, well, maybe. He does, he does but, if you're, but if you want to be interested in that, just go live life. Go to the DMV. <laughs> go to the Social Security office. He does say that there, some players had things like divorces, so it was more than one player going through a divorce. Or maybe one player had a couple of marriages, bam, bam, like that. That's you never know. It could be. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the super player. I mean, RPG we, player. We like, had we have a we had a whole hard time getting L five R stuff and Vampire off the ground. And it's not like none of us don't want to play. We just have stuff that happens. Work happens. Yeah. You know, marriages happen. I can see, but like, everyone's really jobs. gotta want to do it. And if everyone really wants to do it, they'll find the time to do it. They'll yeah. make it a higher priority. And what I'm yeah. saying is, it may have been a bleak enough setting that people just were like. I don't know if I want to play this. Thing. Especially like when you're going through a divorce, like bureaucracy may not be the thing that you're like super excited about. There's a lot of fucking paperwork. I think bleak's fine. They're not. Scandinavian. It's fine. Come on. <laughs> they love bleak. Maybe. <laughs> but that maybe at the other like side of the coin, they're tired of it yeah, and they want to play right. in happy sun. Tropics. World. Yeah. 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 But next time you want to set a game with all where everyone plays dwarves, set it in Southern California. There you go. Or San Diego. Uh, where it's, where it's, yeah. uh, weather's always awesome. 300 days of sun. Mm-hmm. Right. A bunch of dwarves go to Comic-Con. But even if you talk to your players mm-hmm. and they said, yeah, you know what, it just really wasn't vibing with us, we didn't really dig the game, that's not a lost cause for all the prep work you did. No. Because right. you can take all kinds of little chunks out and just shove them into something else. Yeah. Like, don't ever think, like, oh, it's a waste. Because mm-hmm. how many times have, like, we sat down to plan a game and then, like, we're like, oh, well, we'll just hang on to it and then... Right. Well, I mean, this, years later, this we... society may not be a great place to have your PCs from, mm-hmm. but it might be an interesting thing for the PCs to encounter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if there are a bunch of elves and stuff like that and humans and suddenly they're in this dwarven society where you have to get your passport stamped three times. And, and... there's great leader in... Yeah. <laughs> That's, that would be kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Then it's like we've got to we got to save the the el- the dwarves. Mm-hmm. There's a video game Papers Please, where Papers, you play a, a customs agent for like an Eastern Bloc country, oh my fictional God. Eastern Bloc country. So like people come up and they hand you a passport. You got to like double check to make sure that the seal is right. You got to double check their picture <laughs> lines up, and like it's on a timer. So mm-hmm. like the more you get through, the more you get paid, and your family's like in a little unheated apartment starving to death. So you got to be like. <laughs> Yeah, it's hilarious, but it's all like, welcome to, what, what's the name of it? Like, Aristoska or something, like, welcome to Aristoska, present papers. Oh, my God. And, like, people walk up and hand it to you, and you it's sure like this it's angry not like, looking You sure it's not like Ender's Game, where you actually are actually going what? through and double-checking <laughs> people's passports somewhere in Slovakia? <laughs> it's, 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 someone's yeah. crowdsourced their immigration. <laughs> exactly. There's just, like, little AI bots <laughs> sitting there, and a bunch of gamers sitting in front of their webcams, like, fucking shit, shit. 
<laughs> but then you're gonna have like the nine year old who's gonna go. I'm gonna see if I can screw everyone over. Because didn't they? Well, then, then like if you make a mistake, somebody comes in and they like bomb the the oh, God. the town or you know like. No, you just don't let anyone in. Right. <laughs> Say, I'm sorry. Right. But then like some people they come up and they have like a different picture, so they like obviously took somebody else's passport. You got to be like rejected. Right. Just reject everyone. Yeah. That's Glory the game to Aristroga. Yeah. It's called Papers Please. Arstroska. Oh, the chat room's telling you all about it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to Arstroska. That doesn't sound like a thing. Dave, sir, from, Dave from Swimmy, Swimmy mm-hmm. says his family always dies. <laughs> right? Because that's the thing. Like, you have to choose, like, okay, well, do you want to eat today or have heat today? Detained. So, <laughs> so like, you got to be like, yeah. well, I made enough money yesterday because I caught two bad guys. I got a bonus. So we've got enough money to run the heater. One more day. One more day, and then like th- your family will get sick, and then they have to eat more, and then like the next day, like eventually they die. It's usually, like modern Oregon Trail. Yeah, a like, little bit. Like, and it's, t- <laughs> it's totally done in like the super retro, like eight bit looking right. graphics and stuff. Yeah. How old is this game? A couple years. Okay. I actually saw some dude from a convention that cosplayed it. Like he <laughs> built a table, and he had like various passports on it and stamps, nice. and it had the big like "Welcome to Aristoska" sign, and he was like in the Soviet hat behind it, and it was like strapped onto him like nice. a portable little desk. I was like, "That's awesome." That's funny. That's amazing. Do people get dysentery? Probably. Dysentery, no, but like various other horrible <laughs> maladies uh. brought on by malnutrition and cold. <laughs> all right. So say at least for the at very least save all that prep. For it to be a, a, a cool foil for a, a future game. Yeah, like imagine how cool it would be to be like the trade delegation that's trying to set up a, yeah. a deal with them. Right. And the other thing is, if you really want to keep playing it, don't give up so soon. Wait a mm-hmm. couple weeks, contact all the players, say, hey, what do you guys think? I, how about this day? Is there a day we can we might be able to do this? You know, wait a couple months. You know, the, the guy who's in the in the doldrums about his divorce. He'll eventually crawl out of it, and you, know, you, might, you might be able to we get We had some big it. breaks in Vampire and even bigger breaks in L5R, but we managed to make it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all of that was life-related well, and, stuff. Well, and fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. we're not going to play for two straight months. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think everyone wants to play again, mm-hmm. and I'll make sure. Because <laughs> 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 we're going to have a big, big, big-ass combat coming. It's very exciting. Fantastic. You get to use all your minis that you're painting. And, uh, no, you don't really use minis in Vampire. It's all theater of the mind. Mm. <laughs> so with this, we have to do this every time we see theater of the mind. Ah, you counsel finesse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll jump on Slack. For I that can't game wait. And help you with tactics. Okay. I can't wait. Because, you know, I got picked up. The tick. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't. That guy was. It's pain. coming soon. It's not Is yeah, it? I thought okay. it was. Yeah. yeah. God, that guy was awesome. <laughs> That's the best tech ever. Look. His crazy eyes. You need to add that <laughs> in the blogger to somewhere. It wasn't yes. Patrick Warbatten. No. no, it's mm-hmm. Peter Serafinowicz. Okay. Per- Sir- 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 ah, you <laughs> counsel <laughs> finesse. <laughs> <laughs> He's the same guy that played the roommate in Shaun of the Dead, like the the. The actor, okay, the, like the straight laced, nice guy roommate. He's funny. Kimmy, are you wearing a strategic hunt shirt? I am. Okay, yes, yeah, she is. They the unicorn. Did you have to it. buy that? I never. Yeah, I bought Give mine. Give me t-shirts. It had a unicorn. I, I bought all mine. Buy I do. One. All right. They don't we support away. the con, yo. Yo. A tabletop con war- cred. Our tabletop war games RPGs. No. From the only. <laughs> Sorry. Other Steve and answered so and done <laughs> rejected. Now this is about or detained. Sorry, this is, this is about defining RPGs, and we'll we'll table our rule mm. against defining RPGs. Okay, for for the the duration of the email. Uh, <laughs> Jackers, what is an RPG? Recently, I read a rather angry blogger. You know who I'm talking about. Talk about the genesis of RPGs for more games. It's all about playing a person instead of an army. Well, I don't buy it. I've been digging into Battletech. Yeah, I've been digging into Battletech and its line runs from traditional RPG up to the intergalactic scale conflict. Now, not every aspect of Battletech is going to be recognizable as an RPG, but neither is is every element of RPGs. 
those infamous mass battle rules that most people don't uh, think suck don't that most, that most people think suck. I'm sorry, that most people think suck don't occur on the scale of individual players playing a single character. Yet many people want to include these types of rules because it allows them to find out what happens. Mm -hmm. Their characters had some part in creating or watching the development of the whole mess. Now they want to know how it ends. I'm always reminded of, remember the Hobbit film that came out by Rankin and Bass all those years ago? Oh, the animated right? one? And then the, at the very end, the Battle of the Five Armies, and it was like this aerial view and these little dots sort of running around. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know, and then this voiceover, and the battle was very... And you see these little dots sort of going back and forth. You're like... Like and then Hollywood Kong. came along and made an entire movie of right of oh, those little scene. dots. Yeah. <laughs> well, that part's not actually in the book anyway. Yeah. I got to thinking about this, and my takeaway is that my and other angry persons' impressions of what RPGs was wrong. You see, there are multiple games that use trope play. Troop. Did it, is that how you spell troop? That's troop. Okay. Performance troop. Yes. Troop play. The aristocrats. Right? A true All right. <laughs> and nearly every game has a special player who plays multiple characters, the GM. When uh, they must... Uh, why, then, must RPGs be defined by being limited to a single character? It seems clear to me that the distinction is, instead, about how one approaches the game. If making decisions is a cornerstone of RPGs, then why those decisions are made is what separates them from pure wargaming. But isn't that what war games do as well? And you making decisions. I'm going to move this unit here. If I don't move that unit there, then I, I'm, if I do what Stu would do and I move the unit over there instead, then I'm going to lose the game. Hmm. You're making decisions. Mm -hmm. All games are all games points. are about yeah. decision points, aren't they? Aren't mm, they? I think so. I can't think of a game that isn't. <clears throat> he's going to. He's. I think he, he steps on to clarify this. Okay. In a war game, you have an objective for your force. You have an objective for your force. force. Oh, yeah. okay, right. And you can make decisions to reach these objectives. In an RPG, the characters may be part of a force and may align their objectives with those of the force. The force is strong in this one. It or they may oppose together. the objectives of the force. What makes a game an RPG is putting a face and motivation on characters instead of leaving them as abstraction that exists to serve a larger force. Uh... Okay, so it's Napoleon's army as opposed to Stalin's army? No, 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 no what he's, that he's saying if you give a personality to the little group of dudes that you're moving across the map, it's, be, it's an RPG. Right. Which I've kind of for a long time held the belief that every game is an RPG. Or can be. Or should be, because <laughs> it's so much more fun. Right. Like, it's so, super fun to be like, I'm the top hat, it's Monopoly. Fuck yeah, I'm the ritzy guy. <laughs> and I just roll well, on you. It's it's like uh, diplomacy. Diplomacy is a war game. Sure. Very rarely is that game not played like it's some kind of RPG, because everyone is playing the head of state of their country. Mm hmm. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. We need to we need to organize. Role playing it. is not about the system, but the mindset of the players. Not every game of D and D is a role playing game. Tournament style dungeon delves actually resemble war games in that the characters are just a vehicle for the players to succeed. Whereas some war games may be closer to role-playing games with characters making decisions based on what is best for them and not the win conditions of the player. And unlike Bob, the tenth of his name, who was identical to his nine cousins and brothers, a wargaming character may grow and develop over multiple battles or campaigns of play. It seems to be that the barrier between war game and RPG is not a barrier at all, but rather uh, what mixture of the two you like best. Do you want a dash of your story with your war game? Perhaps you want a dash of war game with your story. I can dig some meaningful crunch every every now and again, and I can dig a system which doesn't sweat the details to move quicker. Part of what I like about Battletech as property is that it has options to play whatever you want. You can play at different levels of magnitude and complexity. Is classic Battletech too slow for you? Try Alpha Strike. Want to make RPG characters? A time of war. Want to wage war on a rival great house? Interstellar Operations has you covered. And the best part is these systems are all designed to work with each other. It's one big game to be played however you choose. Role play or don't, that's your choice. This message brought to you by Steve Stu. Steve S S Savage Worlds, the only Steve in no, SoCal. It's just Steve SW, it's not Savage Worlds. All right, Steve SW, Steve Bomb. Well, when I see SW, it's either Star Wars or Savage Worlds. Right. They're but not both don't... capitalized, so maybe it's just Steve SW. Southwest? It's mm. SW. It has no meaning. It has no meaning. Letters. It's the first two letters of his last name. Oh, all right. I tell you that because it, I, I see his when name. He sends email. the email. Yeah. 
yeah, like, for me, every game is more fun with role-playing. Absolutely. Like, uh, the one of the most fun times I've had at one of our conventions we go to is a late night, everybody was drunk, playing nuclear war. <laughs> right? But we're all these fictionalized countries right. <laughs> with nuclear weapons shooting at each other back yep. and forth. But everybody had a shtick. Like, one guy decided he's going to make a giant cannon that shoots warheads. Like, it's not a missile. It's just this huge, giant cannon. <coughs> the Nazi super gun. Kind of thing, yeah. But, you know, like... But... Go ahead. Well, no. Finish with that. Well, it's just, like, playing any game that way, for me, makes it more fun. Right. Some people don't care. They don't give a shit. They just want to roll dice and kill shit. That's fine. But, you know, like... If I sit down at a table to play Blood Bowl, I'm not having a good time unless I feel the, the characters of the little minions on my team. Like, right. knowing, ah, Beast Man, he's awesome. Or that Chaos Warrior is the guy that survives six games and keeps getting knocked out, but he survives every time. Like, that gives them life for me. I get it. Even when so, you're playing Risk, sometimes you're like, this yeah. will be your last maneuver. Right. I'm going to be suddenly you're putting on accents of whatever. I, when I used to used to play Nuclear War, it was, I, the People's Republic of Stuistan. Right. Would you like to play a game? But if you're inserting the RPG and the RP into the G, does that make it an RPG definitively, or are you putting that on it? Well, it's all me, but it's my enjoyment, so I don't care. Right, but I mean, does it then make the game qualify as an RPG if it's not part of the game? If you're putting no, okay. If it's not, unless there's rules in the game book about doing that, mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it an RPG. I think that's the difference for me. Yeah. The difference is if the game specifically says, "Here's some stuff for having character traits, or having unique characters," that kind of gets to the heart of RPGs. But, but there, yeah, but there's, I mean, th there were, I mean, like, man-to-man, -man, there were, like, like individual-level war games where you each, you have individual characters, and they can change and have morale hits and all kinds of stuff that happens throughout the thing. Well, well then that Just would... because it's complicated mm -hmm. with lots of different little fiddly bits doesn't make it not an RPG. Like, if they also had stuff in there talking about, like, how, oh, well, this is the... Beast Man that only has one horn, so maybe he doesn't charge as well if the enemy's on his left. Right. Like, that's mm -hmm. a cool little character element for that guy, and I'm always going to remember him, and I like him, so it's going to be fun to play. Yeah. Yeah. With the role-playing aspect of a one See, horn we, Henry. I wonder if there's some way that we could twitch a, a game of diplomacy. Yeah, of course yeah. we could. <clears throat> It'd be hard to do, though. Mm. It wouldn't. You'd have to set up, like... Just no. No, you'd have to set up a camera where you could show the orders before yeah. you fold them up. That's true. So the watchers could see. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could have it set up... Because the, the, the key to diplomacy is, is the negotiation phase. Right. Where everyone goes off to their separate corners and they secretly so talk have, to like, each other. So you set up confessional booths, like reality TV That'd style. That'd be hard to do. That, that would be, make it tough. Well, just have people leave the room. Like, there's your it turn to talk. It wouldn't be that hard. That would, just take get another it would take forever. It would take a long time. That would take a well, long time. Didn't say it would be easy, it, but it's it would be a, That would be a marathon, a marathon like seven or eight hours. You just get people yeah. GoPros and then you... Yeah, you have to have wireless ones, though, and I don't know how well the thing... No. Like Plus, then, what you need to do is it have to be like, okay... Uh, everyone's like just kind of hanging out, and s these two people are going to come in here and negotiate. And mm. then, so you have like a sound, like but they, got, they can I mean, just go in there where you have a mic set up and a camera set up. Or you can think everyone just leaves when the mm. when they're after the yeah. the resolution is done, and then people come in in pairs. But I mean, with well, seven people, that's a, that could be a lot of combinations. Mm -hmm. Well, it, but you couldn't if you're going to stream it. You couldn't have more than one group negotiating at the same time. Anyway. Yeah, there's yeah. no way. Because yeah. people wouldn't be like, they'd be like, all right, well, now I've got four windows with four conversations going on. <laughs> I can't on. understand anything. anything yeah. yeah. Unless you, like, okay, this turn, we're going to highlight Italy, so everyone who's going to negotiate with Italy comes into the room, and people will just see the Italy's negotiations. Hmm. All the rest of the negotiations that don't involve Italy can happen anywhere. That would work. And then the next turn, it's Germany. And then whoever's going to talk to Germany comes in. That might be a way to do it. That might be a way. Or just have the audience be part of one team. So you only see the negotiations from that team for the game, and then so they kind of experience from the player's point of view. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be an interesting thing to try. Yeah. You could strap one of these cameras to 
your head. So yeah, <laughs> oh you God. are playing right. That would be the worst. Everyone would get super sick. It's like, like more like yeah. a shoulder, a shoulder, because heads move too much. But <laughs> right. But yeah, I don't know. Or to me, a pendant. <laughs> a body mic, a body cam, a pendant. Yeah, yeah. a camera. That's but the like, mics are right there. I'll put it up right above it. Um, I don't know. For me, I think getting back to the question, like having played like MMOs. Uh, and ha- played them and role played in them and then not role played in them. Like, I don't know. To me, there's a very definitive line between role playing and not role playing. Because even though the, all the mechanics are necessarily this, are the same in the game, like whether you're role playing and you have a character or not, those are two like very different experiences. Yeah. So I think, I think you have to ha- go, like if you sit there and make like for your Warhammer 40k, like, you go through and, like, name all your dudes. I don't think anybody probably does that. And, like, have characters for them. They might. They might? I don't know. There maybe. might be people. You do that? You I name them that. There might be people when they it's paint all their, their little dudes, each one is painted slightly differently, and they're all, yeah. I mean, you never know. Yeah. Guitar, I mean, there's, de- and there's definitely, like, key characters that, like, they have, like, a con- connection I'm to. I'm shit at painting, mm-hmm. so my guys weren't all individualized or anything, <laughs> but they all had numbers, and I had my list, and I knew their little bits. Oh, Okay. Cool. No, the MMO example is a really good example. It's like, yes, I can overlay role playing on top of this thing, mm-hmm. but it's not really built for it. It doesn't even really encourage it. Right. Because they're like, once you get into a raid, you're like, why are you running away? Well, my gnome would be too scared. I'm like, no, you sit here and you use you your power zone, you want to wipe yeah. out, right? All yeah. of a sudden, the role playing's gone mm-hmm. because it's not really built for that. Yes, you can do it up to a point, or you can you can try to role play in it, but it's not it's not designed as a role playing game. Right. right. You are, again, as you said, overlaying your role-playing wants on top of something that isn't designed that way. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm of two minds. I think, like Dave said, I can turn anything into a role-playing game. Mm-hmm. But th- does that a role-playing game make? I mean, you're role-playing in a game, but no, that no. doesn't necessarily make it a role-playing game. Like, I'm never going to claim that, like, Monopoly is a role-playing game. But I p- role-play <laughs> in Monopoly because it's way more fun right. for me. Best fucking top hat <laughs> ever. <laughs> I mean, if I mean, if this is about pigeonholing, about where to put it on the shelf, whether it's a role playing game or a war game, I mean, if if it's that simple, I mean, they're they're pretty good at, at labeling that for that reason. Well, if it says role playing game on it, it's a role playing right. game. Right, I know. So, <laughs> so really, I mean, if, if what we're talking about is 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 it is it a, is it a made up thing? But people, I don't know, people want to classify it so that they know where to put it on the shelf, or they know what they're playing, or they know what they're getting into. And and maybe maybe what you're saying is that people show up to these games with this baggage already. Oh, I'm playing a war game, so they already show up set to play in a style right. that maybe isn't necessarily true. I, I don't know. I I think that. Uh, Certain games, like you, you, this turns into an ad for Battletech towards the end, and maybe Battletech is a great example of how to blend the two together. Yeah. Uh, 4E kind of did it as well. There was a lot of role-playing. I mean, Tappy was famous. It's a great quote, which is, a, it's a wonderful um, miniatures game with some role-playing on top of it, right? right? Because once combat started, out came the miniatures, out came the map, out came the measuring, out came the, you know, and yeah. tactics happened. So, and then when that happened, <laughs> then we were role-playing again. So, I, you can blend the two, but I... And, I, and it, Tomes mentioned, when, when we're talking about uh, diplomacy. They used to play it, but they would dress up, and we would absolutely do that. I mean, yeah, yeah. so who, Germany's got to wear the pickle halba. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh. but but um, and I had a point I was tying in, and I forgot. On top of that helmet? No, he started talking about uh, the about oh war. Uh, oh, if we dress up, if we make characters. No, before that, no. what you were what you were talking about? It was doubling on that, and I forgot what it was. Anyway, don't worry about it. I'll figure it out. Um, anyway, I, uh-huh. I'm basically saying that the, uh, you you can you can role play in anything, but does that? I mean, I, I don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Where, it doesn't matter. Like, I guess it doesn't. It, doesn't. <laughs> it really kind doesn't. Of a, kind of a prime <laughs> example of this was Bruce and Casey at the conventions. They ran those games. Mm-hmm. It's just the meat grinder, yeah. yeah, kind of deal. Here's your character. Okay, it's dead. Here's another one. Here's right, dead. Yeah, Here's yeah. another one. Right. But like. I was sitting there at the table, and every single character that Bill was handed 
as he died had a name, right. had a yeah. story. He just busted him out and was like, this guy, blah, blah, blah. And 45 seconds later, he's dead again. <laughs> and he just throw the paper away and take the next one. Start scribbling. And by the time it comes around to his turn again. Although, I, and then on the opposite end of the spectrum, I can remember as a kid, the, the older brother of my friend played one of those games, one of those the, with all the little chits. And it filled up a whole room. It was like Battle of Midway or something. Oh, oh yeah, and yeah, you yeah, had yeah. To, And it was with like. a little cardboard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With a little cardboard chits. And it was like, it was like you were. Uh, at, like Panzer Blitz. Like, yeah, it was something like that. And it was like 1940s war room where they had the little tongs. You had to move the stack of things across, you know, X amount of time. Right. And everybody was writing. A little rectangle with the X on right. it with the two little and they, wheels. And they had all these, you know, they had like, yeah, and they had all these groups of things. And occasionally you had to take your shoes off and walk across and count how many tanks. Oh, the way they were playing the longest day. It might have been. It, might, it was unbelievably that, complicated. That's the that's the, the one that's got the huge yeah. ass map. Yeah. And it comes with yeah. like a thousand yeah. Yeah. chits. Yeah, that was it. Right, so you have your divisions, and the, they have their divisions, and there's no role playing. It's all strategy, right. and you're just a general moving, moving these things around on a map. And then when the battle happens, you would go through and pull out how many tanks died or whatever. Everybody kept lists because you would forget what was in each platoon. Um, and when it was all, it was, oh. and there was no role playing. You couldn't really role play because you were basically being a glorified accountant and general. Mm. So those games are on that scale. Those games, for me at least, get to be really. Tedious. They are, but like Panzer Blitz, it went on for weeks. The small, the the smaller ones where you just put the maps yeah. out and you have a little scenario and you take your units and you put it. In. And that's those are fun. But th- this game, we it was in a room and we're like, don't go in there, you'll knock the chits down. It's, we're in the middle of playing. I mean, it was like, okay. The longest there? day is the name of a 1980, 1980 board game for Avalon Hill. Uh, it's about the D Day invasion. Those Avalon Hill games. They were brutal like well, that. Well, Panzer Blitz and Panzer Leader, those are Avalon Hill games, but those, those are like the starter ones. And so was right. Boot Hill. That was, that yeah, was yeah. a right. game. Uh, it's a monster bird. game, meaning the map is very large, and there are 1,600 game pieces. Yep. Setup takes eight hours or more, yep. while the full game can take over 100 hours to complete. That was it. That was the game. Yeah. It's known for its historical detail, examples of the Germans' force... Uh, represented by several hundred often unique pieces representing the historical units. Unlike most war games of the era, the counters uh, use not 1970s NATO symbols, cross, oval, blob, slash for infantry, armor, etc., blah, blah, but rather symbols used on the German World War II situation maps. Mm-hmm. So it's like authentic. That's Awesome. It does <laughs> sound kind of awesome, right? But horrifying. Where can I find a Nazi uniform and I can sit there and push the little thing right, around? Right. <laughs> and it was that way because, and then everybody had to figure out. Well, this, this. Okay, so this platoon will move this fast because they've got this many. Nine, 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 nine. It was so many logistics. Oh my god. That's uh, not a role playing game. The, the board oh, game. Oh no. The Twilight Imperium board game. Right. Right. Famous board game. Wow. Uh, I bought it years ago. We played it. I tried to play it many times with friends, and that board game, it's just... Are you it's, talking about the space one? Yeah. Yeah, we, okay. did, we played it at Bill's. Well, that was 10 Is years later. I, I, well, no, I don't... I mean, the, the current edition, I, it's been out for a while, a long time. There was, a, the third edition there was a game we used to play that about. was based on the Traveler Universe. GDW came out with it. It was based on the Fifth Frontier War. Mm. No, that's not this. This I isn't did. it. But okay, it, but it's this is its sort of own unique universe, and but like everybody got a race, and they had special racial oh, statistics, okay. and everybody could do like research actions and trade negotiations. There were a lot of cards and chits, a ton of and cards and, and little and stuff. The counters. Like, I had tried so many times with friends to play and failed because uh-huh. we'd get together at like eight o'clock at night and try and set up the game, and then it's midnight and the game's just ready for the first turn. Right, and we'd be like, "That's a problem." Oh. We. I can't play it that. was like 12 hours or something. That we... But we, so I sent out a PDF of the rules to all the people that we were going to have play. We all got to Bill's house at like 9 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Sat down to play. Everybody was familiar with the way the game was supposed to run. Everybody sits down to play. I'm super excited. I'm like, this is going to be awesome. Earthquake. 16 hours later, holy fuck. Yeah. We were like... I don't care. I, I don't want him to like. I started actively trying to help another player win. It, yes, because so, I'm so like, we can I go just home. want to go home. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> like it could have gone on for way longer than that. It was rough. That's and then crazy. it's an interesting game, but but I've, you really yeah, it's a fun game. It's it's cool with all of these levels of detail. The, the, but it doesn't have like different sorts of scenarios that you can like like a scale down. In fact, the board are hex tokens. Yeah. So you assemble it, and the game map is different every time you play because oh. it's. And random. to be fair, if we were 
really familiar with the game, it may have gone faster because yeah. there was a lot of there was a bit, we were learning as we're going, even though we had the rule set. But because I know but that for it the, may have only taken twelve hours if we'd known what we were doing. For the Team Yankee game, there's a, a whole list of scenarios in there, and some of them are very small. It's sure. like there's the, this this platoon and that platoon and that's not and this. that's it. The, no. This is literally just a, basically it's like a intergalactic civilization simulator right. yeah. board game. They should turn it into a computer game. It'd probably be really fun that way. Yeah, yeah, because it has all of the elements of exploration, of the whole four X mm-hmm. genre. Cool. Yeah. Okay. But, all right. Yeah. Thank you, the other Steve in SoCal, the only one who's yeah. the other one. Uh, Gluten free fan mail from Globtuous Geek. Who would like to read? I'm excited, right? Go. but I am not gluten-free. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, good evening, stalwart agents of genital cleansing. It sounds right. so dirty when I they I want to see it. the badge for that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Like, they, they all carry it with the leather flap down because they can't, like, exposing it to children is illegal. <laughs> Just have a little blackout sensor. Let me see your badge. No, you really don't nope. want to see my badge. Mm-hmm. Just take my word for it. I'm a. Uh. I'm sorry. I need to see your ID first. Okay. <laughs> Just remember, you asked for it. <laughs> uh, I'm a relatively short time listener. Well, huh? welcome. Uh, but have been steadily trudging through the backlog of magnificent content. I originally started listening because I tried to convince everyone in my regular gaming group to play a new system. That system was L5R. Yay! <laughs> Uh, I looked for a decent L- for four decent L5R actual plays because no one I knew had ever played before, but to no avail. No. The few I was able to find were just terrible. terrible. And I mean truly awful to listen to. <laughs> Until I reached the holy grail of actual plays. Happy Jack's <laughs> RPG podcast. Well, that's very nice. Uh, I began... And Stu, is, <laughs> Stu has always prided himself in, in right? um, uh, audio quality. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's one of his big pet peeves. Well, yeah, L5R, true. we were actually recorded in the booth. I know. Yeah. I, know. With, I used to sit between your fair costumes. With the big mics. Right. <laughs> with the big, you know, good sounding mics and everything. And it, it, it does help. Oh, lot. yeah. The table set up was like Stork on one side and Tyler on the other side with 14 feet legs. Right, and we were all... <laughs> and then I was just like... That little t- this little table right here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be here in the closet. <laughs> Hi, everybody. And like, if somebody got up the whole... T- like, especially t- oh, yeah. uh, Tyler and myself... I have to go to the bathroom. Moved, Everyone yeah. get everybody up and walk out of the room. Right. Right. Wait, yeah. This is so much nicer. Yeah. <laughs> Stop petting the table. Sorry. I like it a lot. <laughs> Uh, I loved it so much that I decided to check out the regular weekly podcast. Oh, Yay. good. Yay. Excellent. And ended up loving it as well, and I'm now a regular listener. Yay. Welcome. It might interest you to hear that I have a GM horror story for you. Oh, Excellent. Excellent. My favorite. Is there a sound? Okay. I, there need, we just need to get the sample from Apocalypse Now where it goes, ha <laughs> <laughs> ha like There's a sound. Okay. Uh, usually, I'm the group's GM, as I'm one of the most willing to do it. And everyone seems to have fun playing my games. <clears throat> Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> However, he does in not this... believe in paragraphs. Right. <laughs> These are Tolkien paragraphs, by the way. That's what this is called. <laughs> However, in this story, I happen to be a player. Very cool. Uh, my longtime friend was in town visiting his parents for the summer. We hadn't gotten a chance to play together since he started attending college in Utah. BYU? Brigham Young? It doesn't say. Why are you asking him? I'm just wondering. No. We don't know. Not a lot of detail on this email. Go ahead. We're There's not enough saying it should be longer. Going to... It should not be longer. <laughs> his dorm room had curtains that were Oh, we'll moved. call his friend, this friend, Nathan. Yes. <clears throat> So, when Nathan got back into town, he got the old gang back together for a D&D extravaganza that would inspire limbs and stories for generations. That's the inspire sound. No. Where'd that come from? That was inspiration. Oh, oh. Didn't you hear it? Aren't you inspired? (laughs) Aren't you inspired? Are you not inspired? (laughs) (laughs) The game was was D&D 3.5, and we had already found our old players. And everyone was down to party. <clears throat> Hang tight, friends. This is where it gets sticky. Uh, the pros starting level for this game right should have been the first sign <laughs> that I should have walked away. The party would be starting at level 30. Ooh. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, now, I've played epic level 3.5 games before, but oh, hot no. damn. Not only did we start <laughs> 10 levels a- past the normal level cap, 
You played one of these. No, you? I didn't. I didn't go to that. It was someone's the bachelor Casey. party. It was Casey. Oh, no. And it was fourth edition, and it was a 30th level game. That was the day after my first podcast. Oh, was it? Did you oh. go to that? No. No. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't. I didn't have any idea who Jack was. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Uh, not only did we start... That was the the day of the puke in the yard on Bill's shoes. Oh, that's how oh, Corky... That was okay, the next right. day. Corky got the his day name. Before, yeah, the day before wow. Jack's bachelor party. Right. Seven years ago. Uh, how <laughs> time flies so slow. Uh, not only did we start 10 levels past the normal level cap, but we were also notified that we would have eight players. Oh. I'm not a huge fan of big parties, but for whatever reason, I decided to stick with the game, hoping this steaming pile of chaos would turn out okay. Wah, wah. The party lineup consisted of the following. An overly sexualized bard, an anthropomorphic wolf barbarian, a chicken sorcerer. What? Yes, he was literally a chicken with class levels. Oh, oh, a chicken who not someone who sorcers chickens. <laughs> right, he's not like a chicken Aww. summoner. What was that? He was Don't a you chicken go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best video. Chicken go, chicken yeah. yeah. Oh, chicken, chicken go. boo. Remember chicken boo from uh, from Animaniacs? Anyway, no. he was go. literally a chicken that had learned magic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, some kind of useless wizard fighter hybrid. That was mine. <laughs> it was good for a little more than <laughs> casting cantrips and eating glue. And goes down one <laughs> hallway when everybody's in the other hallway. An actual fighter, a cleric that couldn't heal. Awesome. <laughs> a half dragon snake monster that would be better suited to destroying Tokyo rather than adventuring. A rat folk rogue, and me, the human wizard. Oh, what a luddite! <laughs> okay, like before, this sounded like a terrible game. But after all those descriptions, I kind of want to play this it sounds game. Like, it sounds like riffs. <laughs> Are you kidding me? There's a chicken. I, I I dig the player's ideas for characters. Yeah. But take that with a grain of salt because I'm apparently that guy. You are that guy. Yeah. You're a fucker. See, the chicken guy would, would <laughs> piss me off after a while. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop it. That's the best ever. Best. You'd play the chicken, wouldn't you? Oh, no, absolutely. I made it with my own eggs. <laughs> Every time you cast a spell, you land hey, like the chicken lady. The chicken lady. <laughs> right. Would you, like, would you like an omelet or a beer? A beer. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys uh, don't know what we're referencing, it's Kids in the Hall. Just type in Kids in the Hall Chicken Lady. Yeah. Uh, now funny. you might th- be thinking, wait a minute, that's nine players, not eight. Well, that, my comrades, is because one of the players couldn't decide if he wanted to play a furry with a temper or a turbo slut bard. Oh, shit. Wow. So the DM responded by letting him play both of them. That's never a good idea. This same player, we'll call him Finn, was an overly sexualized man himself. Uh, One of our players was a friend of mine that had yet to play D&D and never would again. We'll call this friend Kenny. My God, they killed Kenny. I'm sure. I'm sure that's why. I'm still stuck on like Turbo Slut as like a description. That's just fascinating. (laughs) It's kind of awesome. A little bit. Like you know exactly what you're talking about. A Turbo Slut bard. Yeah. Yeah, right. we're all on the same page. Yeah. Again, it sounds like a Rift yeah. character. If you got Glitter Boys and Turbo Sluts, and they go together. <laughs> Never do a Google search <laughs> for Glitter Boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm looking up Turbo Slut right now. No, don't do that if you're on his Wi Fi. Oh, well, okay. yeah, do <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. They'll find you. They'll, hmm. They will find you. Uh, Kenny happens to be. She's going to give you up the minute they show up. Oh no, that was my friend's store. Check out his phone. It's, yeah. I have a particular set of skills. I, g- <laughs> I gave up my Wi Fi password to some strangers. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will find him. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Kenny happens to be gay and in a wonderful relationship with his boyfriend of a few years. This is not something that bothers me in any way. Unfortunately, Finn has a bad habit of trying to get laid in any capacity he finds available. Finn is the guy playing two characters. Yes. yes. Okay, right. Uh, I'm, I'm envisioning this character a lot like, like a less classy captain mm-hmm. from... Uh, from uh, Torchwood. Torchwood, yes. Ah. Uh, yeah. Anything that moves. Just a pan section. Right. Just, yeah, right. whatever. It's there. Um, <clears throat> he proceeded to spend the entire game telling Kenny how badly he wanted to have sex with him in front of everyone at the gaming table. <laughs> if this doesn't already seem inappropriate, imagine if Kenny was a girl. 
Oh, sure. No, it's inappropriate either way. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, we played for just over ten hours, getting through a whopping four rounds of combat, and no role play. Oh, my God. This means we spent oh. just under half an hour per turn, spending about two and a half oh hours God. waiting for your own turn. Oh, my God. I don't think that. I needed to explain any further. It's quite apparent what went wrong here. We've never picked up this game again. Shocking, I know. <laughs> if you learn anything from this, two and a half hours is too long to reasonably expect a player to sit around with his thumb up his butt, <laughs> intently paying attention to each spell that the chicken sorcerer casts. Uh, P.S. Shameless plug, I recently started a blog about nerd stuff. You can read it at galuptuousgeek.wordpress.com. Nice. And I'll put that in the show notes, because that's a hard one to, to figure out how it's spelled. Mm-hmm. Voluptuous, yeah, there's different ways. Uh, um, PPS, uh, what are you waiting for, you magnificent myriad of douchebags? And Kimmy, uh, have a drink and bring forth the deluge of douche. The yeah. deluge of douche. That should be a, should like be a pointed blank. album or something. Wow, that was... Yeah, I think, I think all those things. There's so many bad choices in yes. that game. Well, the, so many. yeah, the, the, there is there is a point where the GM does have to say no. You Absolutely. can't play a chicken sorcerer. No, you don't get two characters. <laughs> right. Pick one. Pick one. Just make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so sorry. We you for surviving that. Well done. And sorry to your friend Kenny that doesn't play RPGs yeah. anymore. That's too bad. That might have scared me away from it, too. First experience, you get down to a table and a guy's just like, Hey! Hey, I want to have sex with you. Hey. Yeah, I think that Because he had two and a half hours between his turns, so he had nothing else to do. Right. That's why it was happening. Well, and that's the, the part that's really super scary about that is there was no role-playing. Like, he says it's like four combats, no role-playing. And so somehow he managed to, like, talk to him constantly about sleeping with him with no role-playing encounters whatsoever. Oh, yeah, yeah, it wasn't in character. No, I know. no, no, it was just table yeah. talk. Well, it was in character. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> Except there is no role playing. Right. Well, it's character. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's his thing. He's like, just assume that my guy's always standing right next to you. Yeah. Saying, hey, hey, hey you want some of this? <laughs> Come on. My character finds you very attractive. I want to make it clear it's just my character. But he finds you very attractive. You repulse me. Everything However, my I'm... character finds you very attractive. Yeah. I would like to bed you now. Yeah. <laughs> no, see, that. So you can insert role play into game. I guess you can insert role play into sex too, but that's a tactical sex thing right, right. there. That's right. That's what. Yeah, that's 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 fucking the war game. Right. That's that's what you're doing there. <laughs> <laughs> little role playing. <laughs> a little tactic. A little tactical sex. Oh if man. If I go here, then <laughs> what's the difference between strategic and tactical I, sex? That's that's well. Strategic is it's all about the, the distance. All about some distance and yeah. <laughs> One involves camouflage. So Genghis Khan was strategic sex. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, which is why you insert your DNA into thirty percent of the Earth's population. Right. <laughs> That's strategic level sex. It is, actually. <laughs> all, all right. That's it. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna end it. We have a. Is we're it, gonna have a little bit shorter short, episode. Short, short yeah. shows, yeah. yeah. Fair. Yeah. Prepare yourself. I gotta get up at five. In the we're already. I'm already yawning. I'm just. We're old. I'm old. I'm old and tired. We're old. I'm, I'm excited. It's my first day as a worker. Why problem huh? make when you know well, problem? Right. Have... You gotta get up and be there too. Ah ah ah. Whatever. Are you? Oh, you coming every day? No. Oh, what, what day, when are you coming? I'll be there tomorrow. Okay. All right. He's like. You're gonna come. He's, 20 Fuck children this. except for really any day. Well, yeah, he doesn't sleep. I'm yeah. not past five on the average day. Wow. Yeah. You All right. remember those days before your kids were teenagers? No, I'm up at four, too, oh, already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So come out to the Renaissance Pleasure Fair, yep. too. Yeah. Yeah, it starts tomorrow. Yep. Southern California. Renfair.com slash SoCal. Yep. R-E-N-F-A-I-R. No mm-hmm. E. Dot com slash And if you do show up at the Rogue's Reef or whatever, don't get frustrated if we're not, if we don't, if we might be on our way to shows or we're on our way back. But also, please introduce yourself. Yeah. Yes. And then even if you come back, reintroduce yourself because yeah. we have we a lot on our plate. We drink, we're often running to shows, we, we forget things. I, I mean, we forgot the mid conversation, we forgot what we were talking about. We so drink more. Please, you know, please come and say hi. A good moment to come by is fair opening at 10, head right there, stop by and say hi to whoever's around. 
Yes, because by the time, time fair's open, we've got everything set up. Yeah. I think our first show is noon. Right. So there's that gap. So we're, we're noon, guys... two, and four, I think, are our show times. To be, to be honest, this is kind of how we met Dave, because Dave came to, heard that we were at fair. He came to fair. He heard I, us talking. I started listening to the first season of the podcast, mm-hmm. right. and then I shared it with my gaming group, which was the Thank you. That's what group. you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Right. That's all of you are supposed do to do it. And then, uh, and then we were out the next year at fair, and we were like, hey, these people must live nearby, and they share interest in things that we also like. And it's I remember when you introduced yourself, it's like, I recognize that voice. You're Stork. I'm like, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm so CNA. I you but, uh, and, yeah, that was and, the, those are the first listeners mm-hmm. that, well, there was a couple of people at fair mm-hmm. who were at fair and says, oh, I've been listening to your podcast. Yeah. A couple of people yeah. in court. Yeah. So, yeah, and now he's, like, you know, one of our best friends. And look, he's on the show. I think it was all a ploy for Dave to get on the show. But he's playing the long game. The well, he's, yeah, long he played the long D- game. Despite the fact that he's an asshole like, player, he, he yeah. is pretty entertaining. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, hear, I hear game concepts, and I think, I'm going to fuck this game. I want to have sex with this game. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really more horky than anybody, though. I'm but, not attracted to your game, but my character is very attracted to your game. In character... <laughs> I this rolled a natural 20. Getting... You have to fuck me now. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> All right. I'm ending it. Okay. It's a volume down. Thank you for joining us for season 19, episode 3 of Happy Jacks RPG Podcast. My name is Stu. My name is Stork. I'm Kanae. And I'm Kimmy. And we'll see you next week. Don't forget, Sunday, we have D&D, the second session. Second session? First session. Third second. session. Mm-hmm. Third well, session of character creation. Desert of yeah. Despair. And then on Monday is Masks. Yes. Thank you very much. And don't forget, next Friday night we have a show as well. Yep. It's episode four. This yep. will be back. Check out happyjacks.org slash schedule. Schedule. Thank you very much. We'll leave you the song. Yep. Hero.